Good morning and welcome to Wake Up Call, Malik Jackson. And I'm Keely McCormick, and welcome. We've got a lot of news for you guys today, so let's get started. So let's get started. Yesterday we had an ice day. We'll talk about that. That's and right. Some Trump things. We'll co obviously cover the Florida uh, shooting. So That's right. And yes. the basketball game on Monday. Oh, Big win. Oh, we'll, Big we'll, win. We will definitely talk about that. Well, first we start off with a feud in the White House. Reports are that Chief of Staff John Kelly is pushing back on giving Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, classified info. Now, after a year in office, Kushner is still on an interim clearance list. This, according to reports, is causing great tension in a White House that seems to be already divided. And last week, we all know of the tragic shooting that occurred at Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Our thoughts and prayers go out to everyone affected by this incident, but in my opinion, that's not enough and there needs to be a change. The Florida House rejected a ban on semi-automatic guns and two students from the high school traveled to the Capitol to demand lawmakers to make a change. So let's take a look at that. We keep telling them that if they accept this blood money, they're against the children. They're against the people who are dying. And that is, that's, that there's no other way to put it at this point. You're either funding the killers or you are standing with the children. The children who have no money. We don't have jobs. So we can't pay for your campaign. We would hope that you have the decent morality to support us at this point. And not take money from people that want to keep le lessening gun legislation and making it even easier for these horrifying people to get guns. Because if you can't get elected without taking money from child murderers, why are you running? And with these recent tragedies, everyone wants to see a change that can prevent this from happening again. President Trump is looking to ban firearm modif modifiers, which were used in the Las Vegas shooting. Trump tweeted, whether we are Republican or Democrat, we must now focus on strengthening our background checks. And a spokesperson for the DOJ said it is acting quickly on this order. So hopefully we can see that come into play. These students are very strong students. Just after the week after week of the shooting, the students from the high school have already started a rally that will take place next month called March for Our Lives. Their goal is to bring awareness to an issue that is so prevalent, but our lawmakers refuse to address it because shooting after shooting after shooting continues to happen. Oprah and George Clooney and his wife have donated $1 million to the march already. So such a positive thing um, coming out of this. And I really love these students because a lot of times you see these shootings happen, people forget about it, you move on. But these students are making sure that no one forgets about this and change is enacted. Yeah, I agree. I think these students, it's impressive that they've really stepped up. And this March for Our Lives, my siblings even, they go to high school in Chicago and they've talked about how the, on that day, they're, them and all their friends are going to walk out of their high school because that's what the march is. You walk out and you don't go back in until there is a change in the gun policy. So hopefully that makes a big change and really helps out. With all, because it has to stop at some point. It, it has to stop. Yeah. And the National Rifle Association, also known as the NRA, has an annual convention coming up in May. However, the Dallas City officials say that the NRA should move the convention elsewhere due to the amount of gun violence in the United States at this moment. The Oklahoma University Sooners took a hard loss to the Jayhawks on Monday. That's the right. final score was 104 to 74. Wow. Trey Young is a candidate for the National Player of the Year award. However, he scored a career low of 11 points in the worst loss of their of this season for them. Devontae Graham led the team in points with 23. He also had 7 assists and 5 rebounds. Kansas had five other players reach double digits. That's impressive. That is very impressive. If you can have, you know, five, wow, wow. I'm, maybe we can get a national championship this year. Maybe. I don't know. This win keeps Kansas in first for the Big 12s in the Big 12 standings. While well, Oklahoma, this is this is they're going to struggle to make the tournament. They, yeah. they might struggle. The guy Lenardi was saying they need to win the fight. Want two of the last three in order to win the tournament. Kansas has a big game this Saturday versus Texas Tech, which will determine. Who wins the Big 12? Pretty big game. We want 14 in a row, don't we? Yeah, we really do. And that was impressive. I know Trey Young was a, a big player in this game, yeah. but actually in the press conference, I saw that he wasn't he wasn't there. He was wasn't not there. in attendance. So 
I don't know if he was off. Very upset, I can only imagine. And in the arena, there was a chorus of overrated. <laughs> That's got to hurt. It has or, to hurt. But you know what? We, we got to really hopefully hope that this basketball team gets it together and really pulls out a yeah. win on Saturday because that's not number six team in the country Texas Tech that's is. a big game big game college game day will be there and I'm, I'm sure we'll be having some fun up here so best of luck to those Kansas Jayhawks on Saturday that's right and after this commercial break we'll be back to tell you all about the Olympics and some good news as always so yeah. stay tuned love positivity where you go to college makes a statement about you this place will become a part of you, your identity for life. The University of Kansas, a great place to be you. Welcome back and now on to the Olympics. The United States is up to 11 medals trailing behind France in sixth place. The U.S. got its first freestyle skiing medal last weekend in South Korea when 23-year-old Nick Gepper got silver after putting down a 93.60 final run. And Michaela Schifrin got the gold in the women's alpine skiing giant slalom after finally making her debut following multiple weather delays. This 22-year-old is the first woman to win three consecutive slalom titles 78 years. And John Henry Kruger won the United States' first individual speed skating medal since 2010 when he got the silver on Saturday. As the end of the race was nearing, a crash occurred, leaving Nick Kruger and the gold medalist to be the only one standing. Wow, that is impressive. Did you, um, did you watch that race? I did not. I don't find myself too interested in the Winter Olympics, let's be honest. But I do support all of those athletes because it takes so much hard work. But it is disappointing to see that we're six behind. Yeah. The, the, I, I think the Summer Olympics is more of our thing. I agree. But that race with Nick Gepper was kind of funny. Not funny to watch, but it was interesting because they're skating so fast on this little rink. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, three people just wipe out. And then it's just Nick Gepper and the gold medalists that were able to finish. I was like, go USA. But I have gotten the opportunity to see Sean. I did watch Sean White win. Oh, he's always good. And I did watch the American team. I think they went bronze. I did watch that. And so they're doing great things out there. Maybe I'll tune in some more. Oh, and I also watched the U.S. hockey team was in a win it or go home situation, and they won five to one. So they showed up. Well, that's showed pretty up. impressive. Showed up. Showed up. That's right. Well, now on to Malik's favorite segment. Yes, Week we in love review. it. Well, Week in review. Stories that matter to you but aren't necessarily at the top of the news. We start off with Special Counsel Mueller and his team indicted 13 Russians for meddling in the 2016 election, moving the ball in this investigation a little further. Now there is a grand total of 18 people charged so far in this investigation. And a comeback, that is exactly what Mitt Romney is doing. The former governor and Republican presidential candidate is running for the United States Senate out of Utah. Oh wow, who knew? Did any of you watch the All-Star Game? Well, if you did, you saw Fergie absolutely destroy the National Anthem, bring the arena to laugh, laugh, <laughs> <laughs> actual laughter through the performance. In a statement, she said she didn't strike the intended tone. And for those who weren't watching, take a look. Say, can you see by the dawn's early what so proudly wave at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars yikes that is, that is all i can say yeah very cringe worthy worthy when she was she was changing it up that's not how the national anthem's supposed no, to no, sound no 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 so my boss at work told me either she had a few drinks before, beforehand, yeah. so that's very, very bad. But I, you know, I've never seen, I don't know if it's ever happened before, during the National Anthem at an event where an entire arena starts laughing. Yeah, that's got to hurt for Fergie. Yeah. Well, the Queen of England made a special surprise visit at the London Fashion Week, sitting right up front, being af right up front after being invited. Reports were, should be would not make it, but never down the queen. She's the queen for a reason. 
Wow, she really is. Love that woman. And finally, Black Panther, what a premiere. The first Marvel superhero movie with an all-black cast and black director pulled in $426 million, shattering all kinds of records. Ditto to all those involved. That movie, wow, I haven't seen it, have you? I have not seen it yet, but I've heard it's very good. I definitely need to make it out to the movie theaters and it has the that. best. It has the best... Um, Rating on Rotten Tomatoes, 97%. That 3% that didn't like it, I don't know. What were they thinking? Yeah. Something's wrong with them. But yeah. very, a movie that I think um, all of you guys need to see. Very good movie. Very yeah. good movie. I have to see. And now to a Trump Mitt Romney package. Now Trump's endorsing Mitt Romney for the Senate seat, but just a few months ago they were calling each other dishonest and this and this. They're friends again. Take the video. Go out and get them. You can do it. They came together, they today. came apart. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. And Mitt is indeed a choke artist. And now, Trump. once again, President Trump has choked out an endorsement of Mitt Romney. He will make a great senator. Just right, forget that president. time, Trump said. And Mitt was a disaster as a candidate. And now the disaster is saying, thank you, Mr. President, for the support. But never and mind, culture. back when he said. Dishonesty. Is Donald Trump's hallmark? These two have been through a lot. Trump has tweeted that Romney is a total joke, a dope. Romney has attacked Trump for hitting on married women, telling then-candidate Trump, show voters your back taxes, hashtag, what is he hiding? Back in 2012, when Mitt was running for president, businessman Trump endorsed him. Mitt is tough, he's smart, he's sharp. Means a great deal to me to have the endorsement of of uh, Mr. Trump. During that first endorsement, Mitt even got a taste of the Trump yank and shake. Thank you, Donald. Thank you. But Mitt lost, and when Donald ran for president, Romney couldn't take it. The bullying, the greed, the showing off. Trump taunted Romney about their past. He was begging for my endorsement. I could have said, Mitt, drop to your knees. He would have dropped to his knees. Mitt sure looked miserable, but when Trump won, Romney met with him, hoping in vain to become Secretary of State. That's my he's a con man, a fake. This is why they say politics makes strange bedfellows. Who could imagine these two would be? Reunited, and it feels so good. Reunited, maybe for now, but feels so good? I don't think so. Like Romney, who truly is a lightweight. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. Genima, CNN. New York. Welcome back. And I know Malik has a lot to say about this video, but personally, I think it's great that they're friends now. I think it's phenomenal, too. You know, just to call someone dishonest and then to challenge his university, which turned out to be a fraudulent university. But still, funny to see that they've came a long way. Love, peace, and happiness, yeah, oh, am I right, you guys? Keely loved that video. You see, no matter how mad, how angry you get, you know what, you come back around and now they're best friends. And he endorsed them, so hopefully he wins now. And then yeah. reverses back to what he used to be of that Trump hate, right? Well, we'll see what happens. We're going to take a commercial break. We're going to try to get this studio temperature down to about 65. No, nobody's hot except for Malik. So. In here. We'll be right back when we come. <laughs> Welcome back to Wake Up Call. I'm Malik Jackson, Key McCormick. Yesterday, yesterday it was cold and icy. They still haven't managed to get the thermostat down to here, so I'm still burning up. But yesterday, back to yesterday. Well, thank you, meteorologist Malik. Obviously, it was quite icy, quite cold yesterday. Classes were canceled due to the ice, but classes were closed. The rack was closed. I was pissed about that. But <gasps> the hawk was open. The Hawk. The, out of all places, the Jayhawk Cafe continues to amaze me and the many things that they can do. 
Yeah, really. I, I mean, it's icy cold. All we're thinking about is can't get to classes. Oh, but we can get to the Hawk. Yeah. And the Hawk is farther for most people than the classes. So. And, and, and there's a reason why class was canceled. Like, it was not safe to be out there. Yeah. Which it's really not safe out there. I, walk, I came here in my, you know, private shuttle that brings me to the mm -hmm. studio on Wednesday Yeah, morning. Cal gets that for both of us yeah. to pick us up in pick the morning. Pick us up in these black cars. But the, there's no, like, you know, parking right next to where our studio is. So you got to walk a little bit. And it's still, it, it's actually it's dangerous. It's still ice. icy. They put salt down, but it is still icy, very unsafe. So make sure all of you people out there in Lawrence, Kansas, remain safe. But what'd you do yesterday for this nice ice day that we had? Well, I, uh, you guys know about my car troubles. Um, oh, my car and was your laptop troubles. Yeah, and I'm, your I'm really struggling. But I tried to open up my car, and it was actually like frozen shut. My wallet was in my car, so oh, so what'd my, you do? My day went well. Couldn't get coffee, but. <laughs> It was frozen shut, and I was like yanking on it. And don't I hope my dad's not watching this, but the the paint like cracked up the side of the door. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna leave that. But I couldn't fully shut the door then, because then there was ice in the way, and I know my car is gonna be dead now. So it's just it's all over. It's rough with my car. You think your car's gonna be dead? Yeah, for well, sure. Well, thank God there's an easy fix to that. You get some jumper cables connected okay, to the car. Okay, you can come over and jump my car. You think the boat can do that? Well, actually. To my sadness, the boat is in a lot of distress right now. The boat now. is Malik's car, by the way. It started smoking, the engine. And I tried to get in it, and then I went drove it to work when I got home, parked it, started smoking, smoked for like 10 minutes. It's I unfortunate. Mom, what do I do? Like, this is bigger than a battery. I know how to put cables on, but I don't know how to diffuse a fire. Like, what do I do? <laughs> how old is this car? I don't know. Let's, let's not talk about it. I'm I, wish you, I wish you guys could see it. You can hear it. From a mile away. I it know when Malik... I've had good cars that had Cadillac. I've had amazing cars, okay? I used to drive a 2008, like a very nice Saturn Aurora Cadillac. But this car touches my heart. It sounds like a boat. It does. It Roaring. Roars. roars. So when you when I'm coming, you know it's me. That's yeah. I'm, I make an appearance. So there's no other way to be. Stand out. Stand yeah. out, right? I guess that's true. So now on for my car, some positivity. Yes, my favorite segment, I Come Bearing Good News. This one hits a little closer to home for me, all the way back in Chicago. A snowstorm hit last week and Jamal Cole's inbox blew up with messages from his elderly, elderly neighbors asking him to assist in shoveling their sidewalks and driveways. So Cole tweeted asking for 10 people to come to his neighborhood in the south side of Chicago to help shovel. To his surprise, about 120 people were waiting at the train station with shovels ready to work. Majority of the people that came to help were not from the area. Some people were privileged, others not. But the moral of the story is that people from all different backgrounds came out to help, and that is some good news that's worth sharing. That is, that really is. And for all the bad things happening in the world, we got two for you today. That's right. More good news. Grace Bunk, a Georgia teen and champion swimmer, is battling a terminal bone cancer. She qualified to swim in the state swim meet at Georgia Tech, but was too sick to participate. So Olympic silver medalist Amanda Weir swam in her place at the meet. Her friends and family brought red umbrellas to show their support and to show tribute to Bunk's favorite quote, which was, prayer is asking for rain, faith is, oh, faith is bringing the umbrella. That's powerful. That's a good quote. That got me. Yeah, yeah. I like that and one. And that's an amazing story. And um, terminally ill, but we wish her the best in her yeah. recovery. Hopefully Definitely. she can get an admission because there is a such thing as a miracle, right? That's right. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. The world we live in is so vast. With thousands of miles to explore, there's no excuse to stay inside. With beauty that touches every mile of our world, it is our responsibility to admire it. No matter how you decide to appreciate this world, get outside. And welcome back to Wake Up Call. We do have some sad news to announce today. Famed evangelist Billy Graham has died at the age of 99. He touched so many lives. And the President of the United States tweeted out, The great Billy Graham is dead. There was nobody like him. He will be missed by Christians in all religions. A very special man. So condolences and prayers to his That's family. Right. Condolences to not only his family, but everyone that he affected and all the lives that he has touched with his time here on Earth. All righty. For Katie McCormick, I'm Malik Jackson. We'll see you right back here next Wednesday. Have a great day and a great rest of your week.
Don't slip on the ice.